And for those who enjoy this channel and would love to support us financially, please feel free to hit that donate link. We'd greatly appreciate it. God bless. Was that all she had to say about the radiometric dating or did she have something more? Because I know, uh, Matt, you, you debated her recently on this channel and, and she, you know, cause she likes to use the radiometric dating and isochron dating, for example, and that the assumptions that usually we point to in, in the dating methods don't matter, you know, for, for, for that reason of, of isochron dating. And you, obviously you refuted her on, on those points using some very specific type arguments and experiments. Can you elaborate on those? Yeah, yeah, it's kind of hard to sum up real quick, but I'll, I'll try to do it. Basically, the formation of the elements were predicted by Walt Brown. The evidence conflicts with the evolutionary time scale. You see, Walt Brown predicted that as the flood began, stressors in the massive fluttering crust of the Earth's granite rock from water surging through it, the quartz crystal that is inside the granite generated a piezoelectric effect. And for weeks, this powerful electric surges within the crust they, much like bolts of lightning, they produce powerful magnetic force that squeeze through the atomic nuclei, causing them to be fused together into highly unstable super heavy elements that quickly fissioned and decayed into subatomic particles and various isotopes. But some of them are radioactive like uranium, lead, argon, rubidium, potassium, strontium basically in the exact same proportions that we find them on Earth today. The Proton 21 laboratories in Ukraine used this method for creating using lightning to strike small pieces of metal and it not only created all the elements that we have on Earth, but it created the elements in the exact same proportions that they are on Earth today. You see, elements were proposed to be started out as heavy radioactive elements that slowly decayed from their parents to the daughter into lesser, more stable elements as time went on. That's the story that is told to us on how the Earth came to be, right, from the sun. But what happens is if these elements were formed at the same time with both parent and daughter isotopes present, then that throws off any and all theories that say radiometric dating is valid to prove that the Earth is old. They say that heavy elements only form from supernovas and decay into what we have today on the Earth. But that's exactly what the evidence has shown not to be. Matter of fact, they've actually shown that you can only get up to iron, which is like what, number 26 on the periodic table? Also, what about the heat generated from Noah's flood? Wouldn't that have been a problem? Well, no, that's not a thing either because the equipment that was used at the uh, Proton 21 laboratories generated tremendous amounts of heat. But the heat was absorbed in the process called adiabatic because when you make uranium atoms from smaller atoms, the nucleus of these atoms are squeezed so tightly together that it overcomes the Coulomb force, which wants to repel heat particles. Uh, Dr. Adam Blanco actually calls it cold packing. So basically, to conclude all this, they have not only discovered that nothing over iron can be formed on the periodic table that can be created from a supernova. Therefore, that's invalidating that the Earth got its element from the sun and created our Milky Way galaxy. It also invalidates radiometric dating and it validates our method of dating. And it also falsifies any harm that may have come to Noah from the heat generated. And only Walt Brown's theory lines up with what the evidence actually is. Walt Brown's predictions have been tested and validated on every single level, and we can see them at the Proton 21 laboratories. I think that's incredible. For all those who appreciate the work that we're doing here on Standing for Truth, please hit that subscribe button, because we are just getting started.